Finding the right gimmick to push can be difficult from time to time. However, there is one genre that seems to be quite effective. Although, it does appear that while WWE does still utilize it from time to time, they may want to lean on it just a little bit more. What is that genre? Why is it so important? Well, that's the topic of this episode. Because today... Horror wrestling is as ingrained in the industry as flashy robes or body oil. It's just one of those things that have always been around, and with Bray Wyatt's last Universal title run only lasting about a week, and Finn Balor being just a regular old leather jacket wearing Finn, perhaps it needs to be placed in higher priority by WWE, since there is a lot of evidence to suggest that horror is something worth capitalizing on. But before we begin, yes, I am very much aware that there are sometimes total flubs with this, like the fake ECW zombie or the WCW Yeti. However, overall, I say that there is a lot of reasons why WWE should consider turning more to the dark side. Let's take a closer look. First off, have you noticed that for the most part, high concept gimmicks have pretty much disappeared from WWE? Long gone are the days of Duke the Dumpster Josie or Spark Plug Holly or Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And sure, while there are some who would say that that's not necessarily a bad thing, I do want to point out that there is still one form of heavily fictionalized character that reigns supreme in WWE even to this day. And that's... the scary ones. Fans are no longer expected to tolerate that a wrestler is a prison warden or a tugboat or whatever on top of being a contracted WWE performer. However, just look at The Undertaker, Kane, or The Fiend. When you put a spooky spin on it, fans today just don't reject it for some reason, like they would if you told them that their intercontinental champion was a Mountie or something. They'll gladly accept that a wrestler has magical powers or is a monster of some kind. And beyond just accepting it, they typically love it. And yes, I am aware that in some cases, these campy gimmicks were given because the performer, at some point in their life, had a real-life job that served as an inspiration for this character. I'm just trying to get at that we, the audience, do know that they're probably not still maintaining those jobs while they work for WWE. And if they are, they could at least have the decency to change out of their work clothes before they get into the ring. But with all that being said, when it comes to the macabre, for some reason, it's a totally different story. While modern fans can't take the goon or knuckleball Schwartz seriously, they don't even question frightening gimmicks like Finn Balor's Demon King. Instead, they just mark out for it. Think about it. The Undertaker was around since 1990 and continued all the way through the Attitude Era and into the 2020s. And yet, the whole time, never once did anyone scoff at the gimmick. Even when they did get rid of it to try and do something that was perceived as being more contemporary, public demand had him go right back to being the scary Old West character that we all know and love. Okay, so why is this? Well, if you ask me, the first reason is, well, you gotta know your audience. And when it comes to professional wrestling, it does have a lot of overlap with another industry. Horror. There are many wrestling fans who go to fright conventions or just love scary movies and heavy metal music. The crossover is not uncommon. And this really isn't surprising since the industries have a lot in common. Think about it. One does over-the-top simulated violence, and the other... Well, you catch my drift. It has been said that we as a society don't need to see gladiators slaughtering each other in the Colosseum in order to entertain us anymore. Although, that doesn't mean that our taste for violence, our bloodlust, or even our schadenfreude doesn't still need to be quenched every once in a while. And therefore, our modern society simply prefers combat that's more fictionalized, and therefore more civilized. Just look at the biggest forms of entertainment out there right now. Marvel movies, action-packed video games, they're all successful and all contain a fair amount of fictional violence. However, when we take a closer look at some of these categories, you'll see that oftentimes horror elements do come into play. Certain techniques that are used to amp up the scary are commonly found in comic book movies and non-horror video games. Just look at directors such as David F. Sandberg, James Wan, or Sam Raimi. All have worked in the horror genre and all have directed comic book films. But if you're still not convinced, well then how about we just take a look at the bottom line. 
After introducing the Fiend character, Bray Wyatt overtook Roman Reigns and Becky Lynch to become the top merch seller in WWE. The Demon King Finn Balor has sold way more than his mild manner counterpart, as his gimmick has been slapped onto everything from Halloween costumes to even Ninja Turtles, and The Undertaker has even made it as a Todd McFarlane statue. So when you look at all the horror conventions out there and remember that there is even an entire holiday designated to frightening people, it becomes undeniable that many people just love spooky stuff and they have no problem paying for it. Now, I'm not trying to say that horror gimmicks always make the most money because they definitely don't, at least not all the time, but it's not an all or nothing contest. My point is simply that scary merchandise does generate a good amount of revenue overall, it's fairly versatile and easily applied to a lot of things from toys, costumes, and of course, wrestlers. And on the reverse side of things, this trick is not overlooked by smaller promotions, as there are many indie companies that have fully embraced the terrifying. Why? Well, what holds true for independent wrestling is also true for going to the movies. Despite all the red corn syrup and prosthetics, for the most part, horror films are relatively inexpensive to produce by comparison, yet they still have a huge potential for return on investment. The original Saw movie only cost a little over a million dollars to make, however it brought in over a hundred and three million in return. And don't even get me started on the Blair Witch Project, a movie that is estimated to cost thousands but somehow managed to gross two hundred and fifty million dollars. And sure, any movie, no matter what the genre, is going to be a gamble, since it does cost a lot of money and there is no guarantee that you'll make any of that money back. However, when you look at the comparatively lower startup capital requirements and the reasonable rate of return, it's a risk that is definitely worth taking. And when it comes to independent wrestlers, sure, they might have to spend some money at Party City or Hot Topic or wherever in order to get their creepy look and gear but it's a small price to pay when they're targeting the horror audience. Ultimately, what makes horror so appealing and so versatile? Is it just the violence? Is it just the nerd community? Is it just the metalheads? Well, I say it's all about the emotion. Because wrestling at its best evokes emotion. Entertainment at its best evokes emotion. Comic books, video games, none of these are emotional states in and of themselves. But being scared is. So, when you have a genre that by definition is an emotion unto itself, it's easy to see why elements of that genre find its way into many others. And when you remember that fear is one of our earliest and most easily understood emotions, you'll also understand why it's recognized among such a wide audience. Now, I'm not trying to say that only horror gimmicks should hold titles, and I'm not trying to say that only scary characters should be pushed to the moon. I'm just trying to say that sometimes, when you're looking to make money as a professional wrestling promotion, and when you're looking to trigger an emotional response from your audience, well, sometimes, in order to make your fans happy, first, you gotta make them scared. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters out there like Matt Bromit, Zane BR, and Jess K. And if you want to show me some love over on Patreon, then just go up and sign up on my Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave knows.